Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. So, my version doesn't have a blurb for some reason, it's actually part of a box set that I got. But I'll talk you through what I would like to talk about of the plot anyway, and give you some general thoughts. I didn't tab this one out, so some history for me. Basically, I read this as one of my bedtime books, so sometimes if I start reading a book and I'm not particularly into it, I then sort of switch it out as a bedtime book, and I read sort of 25 pages a night just to get through it. So that's what I did with this. So basically the first couple of chapters in this, and also the last one or two, are a lot slower than the bulk of the book, if that makes sense. So I read the first couple of chapters and didn't particularly get into it. Set it down for my bedtime book, and then as I was reading it and we get to the actual story of survival on this desert island, I really found myself getting gripped. So basically, Robinson Crusoe is a fairly well-known classic story. It's about a, sort of a sailor. He's, he's had a bit of a sort of uh, a colourful life, shall we say. And he's involved in a shipwreck and he gets uh, stranded on this desert island, which I believe is uh, later is described where it is. I think it's in the Caribbean near uh, Trinidad. Basically, because he's been washed up on this desert island, he has to fend for himself. So he starts out by trying to regain what he can from the boat. So he manages to get back out there and he can get some bits of wood. He managed to get a bottle of rum. He also talks throughout about some of the things that he wishes he had. So, for example, a tobacco pipe. He managed to rescue some tobacco from the boat and he had nothing to actually smoke the tobacco with. He also ends up with a bunch of, sort of gold doubloons and he kind of points out, well, they're absolutely worthless to me. I can't eat them and that's, that's all there is for me here, you know. His, all, his biggest need is to get some food in. We see that happening as time progresses. So he starts off and he's literally just washed up on this island and he's got nothing. So he starts to build you know, somewhere to live. He, like I say, he goes back to the boat and salvages some things. He manages to capture some goats. He gets a dog from the island. And he even kind of gets some seeds and starts to learn to grow crops. And all of this kind of builds up towards him settling to live on the island, basically. So there are a lot of times in this where it's kind of like, he, the author will say, oh, that kept him busy for two to three months. And then something else happened, that kept him busy for six months. And as you're reading it, you're kind of like, that's a long time. But it all adds up, and by the end of it, he's been on the island, what, 28 years, something like that. And there's also a lot of foreshadowing in this. So he kind of, he's talking about the, uh, the, uh, the defences he's made for his house. And then he'll say, and I had cause to use them later, as you shall see. And eventually we do see. So throughout, I would say, the first half of this book, he's pretty much alone on this island. Apart from, obviously, the first couple of chapters in which he gets to the island. And then he sort of starts to find other people. So for a start off, he's kind of witnesses from a distance, these savages. And I will say there's quite a colonialist attitude in this that I would say fairly typical for its times. I mean, Defoe, he wrote Journal of the Plague Years. Hey, Google, when did Daniel Defoe die? Daniel Defoe died on the 24th of April, 1731. So you can would you like to hear more? No, thank you. So, although obviously it is a bit racist, a bit uh, colonialist here, even in terms of um, Crusoe's attitude towards the Spanish and the Spaniards, for example, is very much of its time from a British writer. And then we get the uh, the savages who are, you know, flesh-eating savages and the way they're portrayed is very almost cartoonish, I would say. But then uh, we do also get the character of Man Friday, who I'd completely forgotten about until he kind of came into the storyline. Later on, we also get Man Friday's father. Uh, Friday is one of the savages. He's been involved in a battle. Basically, the savages only eat other people when they've defeated them in battle. Crusoe ends up saving um, uh, Man Friday. He saves Man Friday's father. He gets a Spaniard. And then basically towards the end there's a mutiny on a boat as well and the captain and some of his mates are dumped on shore. It ends up being this big battle and they kind of recapture the boat. And that's how he gets home. So that is the story of this in a nutshell. But the thing with this is that it doesn't really matter if you've been spoiled or if you know the plot already. Actually for me the, the highlights of this were the kind of the survivalist elements to it. And uh, Todd, Todd the Librarian, if you're watching I think you'd enjoy this because there's a lot of it, you know, about... Literally, this guy is on an island, and he's not even, you know, even if we got stranded on a desert island today, we would at least have, like, 300 years more of, sort of, scientific knowledge, and, you know, people have been watching crappy reality TV shows you know, that show you how to survive. I mean, you get stranded on a desert island, and you start thinking about, you know, Ray Mears and Ben Fogel and all those, like, 
Um, although Todd assures me that programs like Survivor are absolute bollocks. Here, this reads as though Defoe himself at least spent a little time, you know, trying to get to know what it would be like to be in that situation. I do believe it's based on a true story as well. Um, obviously, with all the details changed and turned into more of a piece of entertainment. But that makes it really fascinating because, again, it just makes you wonder what you would do if you were in that position yourself. You know, it makes you ask how you would survive and whether you could survive, whether you could survive for 28 years without speaking to anybody, whether you'd go mental, you know. So all in all, I really enjoyed this. I also like this edition has got some illustrations in it. So, for example, the mate shot the new captain through the head. Perfect. So like I say, the start of it was a bit slow. Then we get to the main bulk of it, which was absolutely fantastic. And then the last couple of chapters almost peter off. It feels like they're trying to tie up loose ends. And I think it would have been better if it just ended as Crusoe left the island. I think that would have been a better way to do it. Because then we get right to the very end of it. And it just doesn't feel right. The last paragraph goes... But all these things, with an account how 300 Caribbees came and invaded them and ruined their plantations, and how they fought with that whole number twice and were at first defeated and three of them killed, but at last a storm destroying their enemies' canoes, they famished or destroyed almost all the rest, and renewed and recovered the possessions of their plantation, and still lived upon the island. All these things, with some very surprising incidents in some new adventures of my own, for ten years more, I may perhaps give a farther account of hereafter. I say last paragraph, that was the last sentence that was an entire paragraph. But I feel like it's a bit cheap to end a book like that, I don't know. You've either got to give us those adventures or just not tease us with them. Unless you're going to write a sequel, but there isn't a sequel because people didn't really do sequels in 1750 or whatever it was. Still, all in all, I did enjoy this book. I will give it a 4 out of 5 for the rating, which is more than I was expecting considering I moved it as a bedtime book. If... The uh, start of it had just been maybe one uh, chapter instead of two or three. And if it had ended when he left the island, it would have been a 4.5, maybe even a 5. So definitely recommend checking it out. And also, of course, it's a classic. So it's, uh, you know, it's public domain. You can read it for free online. You can get free audiobooks, all of that stuff. Or you can buy a pretty cool edition like this. So there we have it. That's what I thought of Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought about it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.